Welcome to this recording on Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 R2 on the topic Requisition Fulfillment Orchestrated in Master Planning in AX 2012 R2. My name is Henrik Andersen. I work out of the Program Management Team in Microsoft Development Center in Hvidbæk, Copenhagen, Denmark. In R2, the Purchase Requisition feature has been extended to support scenarios where fulfillment is orchestrated using Dynamics AX supply policies and planned using Dynamics AX master planning. In AX 2012 RTM, the Purchase Requisition demand was always fulfilled from a purchase order. That was, always, that was also the case in Dynamics AX 2009. However, today you will see how we accomplish that the purchase requisition is no longer only fulfilled by a purchase order by applying the concept of a requisition purpose. Let's briefly have a look at the disclaimer for this recording. We have heard from our customers and partners that often there is a need to fulfill a requisition from inventory or through an MRP driven fulfillment process instead of sending it directly to a vendor. We have heard that there is often a need for a requisition to express a demand not targeted towards user consumption scenarios or fixed asset acquisition only, but a demand targeted at such as inventory replenishment. This covers scenarios such as replenish a specific location in order to sell, in scenarios such as retail cash and carry, but also more generally a user raising a request for replenishment of a specific location in order to respond to an unplanned material shortage, which is applicable and of relevance to any company. The challenge is that the user requesting the replenishment does neither have the insight into the replenishment policies or network, nor access to the specific area forms. The purchase requisition feature introduced first in AX 2009 assumes that the requisition demand is always fulfilled by a purchase order. Now this is a challenge and narrows the scenario support currently provided within purchase requisitioning not supporting the before the mentioned replenishment scenarios. There is no visibility and interaction with master planning and an approved purchase requisition line can only today create a purchase order line regardless of supply policy and item availability. Now the purpose of this session is of course that we in R2 have a response. So in R2 our response has been the following preserve and extend. Preserve meaning that the purchase requisition AX2012 RTM functionality and scenario support is preserved. This functionality and scenario support interacts and integrates with project accounting, budgetary control, encumbrance accounting with pre-encumbrance at the time of purchase requisitioning. It interacts with business rule for fixed asset determination, also known as BRAD. It interacts with not stock products and procurement categories, with project, interacts with external catalogs through punch out, usage of procurement catalogs, etc. etc. Now, the 2012 RTM model is a push model where the purchase requisition itself creates a purchase order line and there is always a one to one relationship. So, a purchase requisition line references a unique purchase order line and one purchase order line has a reference to only one purchase requisition line. Now in R2 we have extended the AX2012 functionality such that it now becomes more of a requisition rather than a purchase requisition, however depending upon the purpose. This implies that the requisition line itself suddenly can become unaware of how it is going to be fulfilled. Now the fulfillment can be orchestrated and planned using master planning. The model that we apply in such circumstances is a pull model where master planning takes into account the requisition line as being a demand and plans the appropriate fulfillment. In R2 
the way that we differentiate between the two models which is our push model and our pull model is by the usage of a purpose. The purpose may be consumption or replenishment. If there is no purpose or the purpose is just consumption then it is a purchase requisition as we know it from AX2012 RTM with all its capabilities and scenario support. However, if the purpose is replenishment, then the new pull model introduced in R2 will be applied. This new pull model is a loosely coupled model, relying upon master planning within which stock products only are supported. The approach here is very simple in that a requisition line where the purpose is replenishment represents a demand at a given point in time at a given location. The demand is expressed by quantity alone. Now both models use the purchase requisition framework and user interface as we know it from AX2012 RTM. This has the benefit that the individual user will have to familiarize himself with one user interface only when expressing his demand. He doesn't have to familiarize himself with multiple domains such as purchasing and inventory production for that matter. For the organization, it can concentrate on applying company policies within the requisition framework efficiently leveraging the advanced workflow from configurability and policy support within the framework. Now let's have a brief look at an example of a replenishment chain when we have a requisition demand where the purpose is replenishment. So now let's consider that we at Warehouse 11 Site 1 in our CEU demo data company we create a requisition demand for an item. Now how is that demand going to be fulfilled? Well once this line demand is approved then depending upon the supply policy for this item well it will either be fulfilled from warehouse 21 site 2 or from warehouse 31 site 3 via a transfer order. That is how we have defined our supply policy when the demand is on warehouse 11 side 1. If the fulfillment takes place from warehouse 2 side 2 then we have defined for the item and this location that here a demand will be fulfilled by a purchase order against an external vendor. However, if the demand was for fulfillment from Warehouse 31, Site 3, it would still be a purchase order fulfilling that demand. However, that purchase order itself would spin up an intercompany sales order in our Contoso Europe company fulfilling the purchase order demand in CEU Warehouse 31, Site 3. If in Contoso Europe we didn't have sufficient supplies to honor this intercompany sales order demand, that would in turn trigger a purchase order against an external vendor. Basically, what this example shows you is that when we have a requisition line demand where the purpose is replenishment at a specific location for a specific item at a specific point in time, once this demand is approved, then master planning will basically break down this demand and basically ensure that the fulfillment of this demand takes place as any other demand which would arise at this particular location. Now let's take a look at some additional specifics when it comes to a requisition where the purpose is replenishment. We have introduced a number of policy rules. The most important policy rule is the requisition purpose rule. That is the rule that enables you to leverage this new pool model. 
This rule is enabled from our purchasing policies within our procurement and sourcing area. You can enable this rule for one or more legal entities. And once this rule is enabled, you can either determine whether or not to allow both for purpose consumption and replenishment for these policy organizations, only to allow for replenishment or only to allow for consumption. However, if no rule is defined, then the requisition will always have the purpose consumption, which means that if no rule is defined, purchase requisition will behave in R2 exactly similar as in AX2012 RTM. No change. In addition to our requisition purpose rule, so let's assume now you have you have decided to take advantage of this new pool model. So having said that, we have introduced two optional policy rules that you can go in and work with. Let's take the last one first. The last one is the replenishment control rule. That is a rule that enables you to define that specific values on the requisition line needs to be stated in order for the user to be able to submit that requisition line to workflow. Now, out of the box, we have applied only two fields on the requisition line. However, this is a hook point for extendability and customizability if in a specific project you require to have as mandatory other fields which have to have values before the user can actually submit the requisition line to workflow. The other rule is our replenishment category access policy rule. That is a rule that enables you to take advantage of a grouping of products into a category which plays a specific role within a category hierarchy. Now, this specific category tree that you defined, you can assign that tree to this rule, then all the products which are stocked and are assigned to a category within this category tree, those will be the products and only those which will be available when the purpose is replenishment for the appropriate policy organization. That basically means that you can differentiate between what products are available when the purpose is consumption vis-a-vis -vis what products are available when the purpose is replenishment. They need not be the same. If they need not be the same and you actually require them to not be the same, then you can define a replenishment category access policy rule which only applies when the purpose is replenishment. If you don't define a replenishment category access policy rule, however, you want to work with these replenishment requisitions, what products are then available for selection? Well, those are the products that you otherwise would define as part of your catalog policy rule and category access policy rule. These are basically the products which are available when the purpose is consumption or when there is no purpose, which is completely similar to AX2012 RTM. With, however, the disclaimer that only products which have the policy of being stocked can be applied for a requisition line where the purpose is replenishment. Lastly, we have our master plan set up. So in order for master planning to go in and take into account demand originating from approved requisition lines where the purpose is replenishment, you need to enable the master plan. You do that by saying that, well, you want master plan to include requisitions as representing demand and within time fences, you can also work with a time fence, which is our approved requisition. So considering that you have a demand which is in the past, do you always want master planning to consider this demand 
or do you want to set it well, when the demand is relatively more than 20 working days old, then we will not consider that demand anymore. That is what this approved requisitions time fence is all about. Now some additional specifics when it comes to the purpose replenishment. A requisition demand where the purpose is replenishment is fulfillment method agnostic, basically meaning that any kind of fulfillment method available to us by using master planning is available to fulfill this demand. It is not tied or baked into a P2P workflow necessarily, it can be baked into an inventory replenishment or can also integrate to production. It all depends upon the supply policy. It considers demand quantity, not monetary amounts, which is radically different when compared to AX2012 RTM purchase requisition, which are now called consumption, where it considers amounts and where amounts and accounting distributions are very central to this type of scenario support provided when the purpose is consumption. When the purpose is replenishment, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, this only considers stocked product. So we only replenish on stocked products. Master planning only considers stocked products. So when it comes to not stocked products, this cannot be applied when it comes to a requisition line of purpose replenishment. It can be created from both enterprise portal and the rich client, which implies that the employee services site introduced in 2012 RTM is dedicated for purchase requisition where the purpose is consumption. So if you have enabled the purchase requisition purpose replenishment, well, if you go to the employee services and create an order from there, it will still be based on the notion of being consumption and based on the policies that have been enabled for that purpose. Purpose replenishment does then not integrate to budgetary control, encumbrance accounting and BRAD, which is business rules for fixed asset determination. Those kinds of areas are related to the purpose consumption, which is equal to 2012 RTM, and they do not relate nor do they integrate to the purpose replenishment. And when the purpose is replenishment, nor does it integrate to project accounting in 2012 R2. So enough talk about the specifics of the replenishment. Now let's go into Dynamics AX 2012 R2 and let's briefly have a small look at how these new policies can be set up and how we can do a flow where we start by creating a requisition demand walk it through workflow and then fulfill it using master planning. So this first demonstration will be Dynamics AX 2012R2 before uh, I have activated a policy rule enabling me to use the purpose replenishment for purchase requisitioning. So what I am, I am associated to a worker who is Adam Barr. And from the enterprise portal, I navigate from my purchase requisitions, purchase requisitions prepared by me. I create a new purchase requisition and I will just call it demo consumption. I will add to that a business justification the reason here is just general supplies. I'll go to my Add Items dialog. You will see that my default buying legal entity is CEE. I'm positioned on non-catalog items. I will, however, select a catalog item. I will select item, not item 16, 
spot item 10,000, which is an LCD monitor model 1. And I will add that to my requisition. So now I have one purchase requisition line for this monitor, completely similar to AX2012 RTM. I will submit it to workflow and I will state that please approve and submit it. Now I have predefined a simple workflow which basically will auto approve this purchase requisition and purchase requisition line. Behind the scenes I have my tutorial underscore workflow processor working which actually acts as the workflow batch processing transferring the state from being in review to being approved. So now I'll just close my requisition and I can see that my demo consumption has been approved. Now if I go into the client, I'm only demoing this as one single user. Uh, the more frequently I will not have access to go into the client and go into the form which is my form release approved purchase requisitions under procurement and sourcing that will typically be a form constrained only to a selective few users so release approved purchase requisitions here you will see the line pertaining to the requisition that I've just created which is PR dash 20 and that line is now available for either directly creating a purchase order line as well as a purchase order or to make that line part of a consolidation opportunity which would then later create a purchase order line which is completely similar to AX2012 RTM so now let's go into what this purpose actually means and how I can enable the purpose replenishment. Now first what I want to do is I want to select two products to use for my demonstration and I will only make two products available when the purpose is replenishment rather than the entire catalog of products which is available when it is anything else but replenishment meaning that when it is consumption. So what I do is I go to my product information area page and the first thing I do is I create a category hierarchy. Now I have created one category hierarchy which I have called replenishment, replenishment demo. Now that is a category hierarchy which consists of a top node plus two lower level nodes. That is the category hierarchy to which I will associate my two products. So that category hierarchy I will associate with a category hierarchy type. What I will use is I will use the category hierarchy type which is sales. Now I could have created uh, the, the additional category hierarchy types just extended our enum if that were required very easily hence enabling me to work with an unlimited number of category hierarchy types. Now I'll just select a predefined one which is my sales category hierarchy. I will select my category hierarchy which is replenishment and I will close. Now I will find two products which are released to in this case it'll be CEE. So what I'll briefly do is I'll navigate to CEE I will pick my released products. I will pick product 1000. I will select product categories and I'll associate this product to the category hierarchy which is replenishment and more specifically to the second level node. I will select product 1001 release to CEE and associate that to the same category hierarchy 
however, to another node. Perfect. So now I've made a grouping of two products associated these two products to uh, the different nodes within the same category hierarchy, which plays the role of a sales category hierarchy. Now I can continue and continue with defining my policies. So I'll go down to procurement and sourcing. I will go down to policies and I will click on purchasing policies. Now what I want to do is I want to enable replenishment requisition for the policy organization which is legal entity CEE. I already have a policy defined for the policy organization which is legal entity CEU which I can see here. Now that I will just let be. I will create a new one. I will call it CEE demo for CEE. I will select the policy organization which is Contoso Entertainment Systems Europe. And I'll define my policy rules. So the first policy rule I will define is our requisition purpose rule. Remember this is the master key that I have to switch on in order to enable the purpose to be explicit. So I create a policy rule saying that well the default requisition purpose will be replenishment however the user has the possibility to manually override this when creating the purchase requisition. Now this ability to manually override is available on EP and in the rich client. On the employee services site it will always be consumption, it will never be replenishment. So now I have enabled replenishment for my policy organization, CEE. Next thing is that I want to define a specific set of products. So for that I use my replenishment category access policy rule. So I say that well I will select the replenishment category hierarchy and I will select all nodes within that category hierarchy. So products referencing one of the nodes within this category hierarchy, products which are stocked, will be available for, available for me when I create a purchase requisition when the purpose is replenishment. I will also create a replenishment control rule whereby I will state that the reason code must be required. So a reason code must be present on a requisition line when the purpose is replenishment for this policy organization CEE. So that is all I need to define for the purpose replenishment. Now had I not defined any replenishment category access policy rule which dictates the product that I can select when the purpose is replenishment, then it will be all the products which would otherwise be selectable for purchase requisitioning. However, only those products which have the policy stocked and are of course released to CEE. So now I have to find my policies. Before going into an actual demonstration, of how this manifests itself in a flow, I'll briefly open our workflow. What I have defined is that I have defined two workflows. The workflows are triggered depending upon whether or not the purpose is replenishment or consumption. I have one workflow which is our automatic purchase requisition approval workflow. Here I have set an activation condition on the header such as that if the requisition purpose equals consumption then activate this workflow. However, if the purpose equals replenishment 
activated this lower workflow which is purchase requisition purpose replenishment. So now here I just leverage our standard workflow capabilities within the workflow type which has been defined for purchase requisition. Now for this next demonstration I will again assume the role of Adam Barr and on the enterprise portal now I will create a new requisition. What you will see is when I create a new requisition I suddenly have a requisition purpose. The requisition purpose defaulted to me is replenishment. How either I can change it to consumption and if I change it to consumption you will see that suddenly I have the availability to set the default project and also I have the ability to change the accounting date. Changing it back to replenishment you will see that neither of these two options are available to me. The reason for of course having the ability to set the requisition purpose is because that I work within the context of a policy organization which is CEE and this is the policy organization for which I have defined that the requisition purpose rule is active. So the name will be demo replenishment. I will set a requested date to be a week from today and create the header. Now you will see here that the, the, this page looks very very similar to the page when I created my first purchase requisition which was which had the purpose consumption. However you will see though that some of the columns here the, the, some of the columns are not present anymore. These are the columns which pertain to vendor, uh, vendor name, currency, unit price, etc. Columns which are heavily tied into the requisition line being aware of the destination being always a purchase order. However, with this requisition being of purpose replenishment, it is unaware of its final way of fulfillment via a purchase order, transfer order, production order or Kanban. It doesn't know. So these fields which are only of relevance if we know that the resulting fulfillment is via a purchase order, those are removed because we are not aware of the fulfillment method yet. I will set the reason to be specific and I will click on add lines. You will here see that the requisition purpose is replenishment. Now all of the lines that I add to this requisition will have the purpose replenishment. Now what you will see in this view, the add items, is that I do no longer have the ability to select non-catalog items. I only have the ability to select catalog items. You will also see that the category tree presented to me is now different. And that is because I have applied within my category policy access rule for replenishment. I have replied this category hierarchy which plays the role of sales category hierarchy that I have called replenishment consisting of two nodes and within these two nodes I have two items 1000 and 1001. So now I need to replenish a specific warehouse for CEE. Uh, let me select warehouse two hundred. So warehouse two hundred default site four is the warehouse I want to replenish. I want to replenish that warehouse with item one thousand with the quantity of one hundred. So again, another difference when it comes to the purpose. So when the purpose is replenishment, I can declare a default warehouse and default site which I want to replenish. That is not available if the purpose is consumption. And you will see, of course, that the inventory dimensions reflect my default warehouse and default site. Let me OK this. So now I've created one line. I can submit this to workflow. Please approve. 
and submit. Now, similar to when the purpose was consumption, I have to find here one very simple workflow, which is triggered when the purpose is replenishment. Uh, the, this request is auto approved. So if I close my requisition, I refresh, you will see that now the last requisition I have here on my list page has the purpose replenishment and it has been auto approved. Now if I navigate to the AX client and I go to the form which is release approved purchase requisitions, you will not see this purchase requisition and that is because this is now going to picked up, be picked up by master planning in the subsequent demonstration. This requires no manual interaction releasing it to purchase orders. And by the way, we don't know if it will be fulfilled by purchase orders. This is up to master planning, depending upon our supply policies, to figure out. So go into purchase requisitions, go into the form, release approved purchase requisitions. Only here you will see uh, purchase requisitions of purpose consumption. You will never see a requisition of purpose replenishment within this form. One thing to highlight is a capability that we have within the AX client when it comes to assessing the feasibility of honoring the demand when the purpose is replenishment. That is a feasibility that I will show you now in the subsequent demo. So now within the AX client, I'll go into the list page purchase requisitions prepared by me and I will create a new requisition. I will call it demo replenishment 2 and I will set a requested date which will be Friday the 13th. Requisition purpose is replenishment. I will select the add items form in the client and here you will again see only the two items available to me. You would also see as a side remark that if I try to change here by legal entity from CEE to CEU, that I'm notified that that is not available to me because I have stated that the purpose is replenishment. However, I have only said that replenishment is available to the policy organization, which is CEE. So if I try to, after the fact, to change the by legal entity from CEE to CEU, then I'm told that, well, legal entity CU does not support replenishment requisitions as per my policy definition. Perfect. I will select item 1000 and add it. And having done that, I will perform a feasibility check. So I will select purchase requisition line and I will do an explosion. Those of you familiar with, for instance, the sales order form, you have the similar abil the ability to do an explosion, which is basically just running a capable to promise from this demand. So here I say basically, okay, master planning, do an explosion on this demand and assess the feasibility. So the requirement date here was on Friday the 13th required quantity is one. It's okay, there are no future messages. The expected fulfillment document here, based on our supply policies, will be a purchase order. Now this could of course have been a transfer order, which would in that case could have been fulfilled by a purchase order, could have been a production order, couldn't be a Kanban order, any of the different order types that, uh, that master plan can create. Now, had this date been in the future, then I could have transferred that date onto the requisition line. Now consider that I created a requisition request on the enterprise portal. Then as an approver, I could have gone into the client and performed a an feasibility assessment of this requisition request. And I could have chosen to either return the requisition request to the requester if the dates were not feasible or I could have chosen as the approver to 
have the dates being updated such that they would become feasible and approving the requisition requests. Again, only within the context of replenishment, but I could have done it as such. So here, just pointing to the fact that when you work with the purpose replenishment, you have the ability to within the rich client to work with the explosion feature on the requisition line. Let's proceed with the integration to master planning. So when doing that, what I want to do is I want to do a small change to our setup. I want to change company to CEU and I want to start working from CEU instead of CE as I previously did. I want to do two things. The first thing is that I want to enable CEU also to create requisitions where the purpose is replenishment. So I pick the existing policy rule for the CEU policy organization, requisition purpose, I create the policy rule. I say that the default is replenishment and I allow a manual override. I will select the products part of the category hierarchy, which is replenishment, similar to CEE. I'll include all subcategories. Okay. I will not define a replenishment control rule for this demo. So, then I need to do a second change. In CEU, I want one of my products, which is 1000, to reflect the slide that I presented initially in this presentation, which is basically the replenishment chain slide. So I navigate to product information management, I pick release products, and I will pick product 1000. I'll select plan. The default order setting, I want the default site to be uh, site 1. Otherwise I can of course always overwrite that site when I actually enter my requisition, but I just want to make it easy for me. The default site that we apply when the purpose is replenishment is the inventory site. So the default warehouse associated to site 1 is 11, which is perfect, which matches with our previous slide. So on the item coverage, I want to state that when I have a demand on warehouse 11 site 1, I want that demand to be fulfilled via a transfer order. And in our case, we want to transfer from warehouse 21, site 2. And when we have a demand on site 2, regardless of the warehouse, then the plant order type will be purchase order. Perfect. Which is in accordance with the, the slide on this replenishment chain. So let's proceed. So what I'll do is I will go back to the enterprise portal and on the enterprise portal I will create a purchase requisition. I will select the requisition purpose which is replenishment and I will say CEU MRP driven demo 1 the requested date will be Monday the 16th. I will add a reason. And I will add an item. So I will change the buying legal entity from CEE to CEU. And now you will see that now I can actually change the buying legal entity 
it also for a requisition where the purpose is replenishment to CEU because now I have enabled my requisition purpose rule not only for CE but also for the CEU policy organization. I'll select item 1000. I'll just select the default warehouse to be warehouse 11 which is on side 1. I will require a quantity to be replenished which will be easy to track so I will just say 999 and I will add this line to my requisition. So now I have a requisition demand in draft where the purpose is replenishment for the location uh, 11 at site 1 for the date which is the 16th of July. I will submit it to workflow. And our workflow will also approve this requisition request. And now the requisition line has been approved. So now we'll navigate to the client and we'll navigate to master planning. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just enable a master plan to consider requisition lines as demand. So any requisition the line where the purpose is replenishment, which is in status approved and which is within the time frames that we're working with, it will be considered as demand and master planning will plan for them if the include requisition is uh, set. We'll just set it on our dynamic master plan 20 and we'll say close. Then I will go in and do our master scheduling. I'll select master plan 20. I have done a pre-select to only include item number 1000. Item covers is updated. I will go to plant orders and selecting plan 20, you will see results in a number of plant orders. Let's pick the first one. Let's go view and multi-level pegging. So here we can see that, well, we have up downstream, we have a demand and the demand for this plant transfer order is the requisition line, which has a requirement on the warehouse 11 on site one for this LTD television black 42 inches. Now upstream, how are we then going to fulfill this demand? Well, remember our initial slide deck on the replenishment uh, chain well, it's going to be filled via a plant transfer order. So the plant transfer order will fulfill the demand which exists on warehouse 11 side 1. However, that transfer order transfers goods from side 2 warehouse 21. And if not sufficient supply is available on that location, then supply will be delivered via a purchase order. In this case, not sufficient supply is available, so a plant transfer plant purchase order is created to fulfill warehouse 21 on site 2 as we would have expected. So currently if I go to our enterprise portal and look at our requisition, well the state is still approved. Now what will happen is that when the planner goes ahead and firms the plant orders which are related to our requisition line demand, the state will change. Let me just firm all of these plant orders. So the state will now change to being closed and on each individual requisition line where the purpose is replenishment, let me just select view. The references will then be available from the purchase requisition line, actions, and then references to the firmed order lines. Now, let's go back to the client, because what happens is that if for some reason the firmed orders which are referenced against this requisition line demand, if such a firm order 
is deleted. Then the following will happen. So let me navigate to our transfer orders. This is the transfer order created from Warehouse 21 to fulfill Warehouse 11. Let me delete that transfer order. So now the actual fulfillment of this requisition line demand has been removed. So when master planning is run, Master planning will go in and detect that the firmed order no longer exists. It will set the status back to approved, create the appropriate planned orders in order to fulfill this demand and recalculate, you can say, or remove the previous references and replace the previous references with new references once the planned new planned orders are firmed. So now the status set back to approved will go back to the X client, click on planned orders, click on plan 20 and we will see that a new planned transfer order has been created to ensure that we actually transfer from warehouse 21 site 2 to warehouse 11 site 1 as per the requisition line demand. That ends the demonstration. So what you have seen is how we in R2 support two different requisitioning models. The way that we differ between the two models is by the usage of a purpose. The purpose replenishment and the purpose consumption. If there is no purpose or the purpose is consumption, then it is a purchase requisition as we know it from AX 2012 RTM with all its bells and whistles and scenario support that we know. If the purpose is replenishment, then the new pull model is applied as you saw in the demonstration. This new pull model is a loosely coupled model relying upon master planning within which stock products only are supported. The approach is a very simple one in that a requisition line where the purpose is replenishment represents a demand at a given point in time at a given location. You saw that both models, they use the purchase requisitioning framework and the user interface as we know it from AX2012 RTM. I want to thank you for your attention and please remember to submit feedback and questions using the Connect tool. Thank you.